I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. I wonder if you've ever had a vision. Have you ever been given a glimpse of something beyond the here and now? Have you ever felt you've known something that seems impossible to know and then realize that it has come to pass? If I'm being honest, I feel like my experience with these kinds of things is usually, to limit, is usually limited to the experience of, of watching TV shows or movies, perhaps a series that I've, success, uh, that I've enjoyed and where I've successfully predicted what is coming next in the storyline, even enthusiastically shouting to the room, ha, I told you so, or to myself maybe even, I knew it, I knew this was going to happen. This kind of looking forward is definitely not as impressive as the kind of vision we read in Revelation today in the whole book of Revelation, not just chapter 21. It's certainly not as intriguing as our lesson from Acts, I would say. And I wouldn't say that the ability to predict the plot of your favorite book, TV show, or movie is prophetic or visionary in any means, I do find myself wondering, however, how we might understand or even foresee the visions we read about and hear today in this place. How might we open our own eyes to receive them too? One thing is for sure, at least in my mind, If you do like to predict the plot of your favorite book, show, or movie, you've got to pay attention to the story being told. You've got to pay attention to the former things, that is, everything which leads up to the moment to which you are trying to see ahead. It is only with a deep sense of knowing that what is intended to play out is revealed. Both the first and second lessons today contain mentions of visions, but it is the reading from Revelation that intrigues me the most. At first, we might think that such a vision is a folly or an absurdity, but if we've been truly paying attention to the story, and not just the story of Revelation, which we've heard for the past four weeks of Eastertide, but the whole story of God, we should know deep within our souls that this is the only way the story can end. What has begun in God returns to God. Remember, remember, in the beginning, the Word was with God, and the Word created all things, and by it they have their being. Our first ancestors were with God in Eden, and and though they rebelled, the story goes on to tell of a humanity, despite its suffering, sin, and sadness, at least in relationship with God. Even in the midst of sin, God delivers the great promise to Abraham and Sarah, and hope is born again. We know Israel goes down to Egypt, and God goes with them. Kept in slavery, God heard their cries. He goes before them in their deliverance by fire and cloud to purify and to bless. This is also the work of God through the prophets. Beloved, through it all, God stays because the community and connection God desires for and with His people is greater than anything we might do to turn away. Every step of the way, our God of hope, our God of peace, our God of love remains to bring the former things to completion in the journey to newness and fullness of life. And we know to bind the story up, God sends His Son, 
the Word is made flesh. Jesus comes among us to take us all the way, to take us all the way home to God, and His gospel says to all, may the former things, those things which keep you from God, may they pass away. May what gives heartache, tears, and pain, may what ails you be no more. May what burdens be set down. May what blinds be removed so that all may truly see that God is with you and you are with God. He is yours and you are his. This, this is what God sees for us. This is what God wants for us. And this is what God holds for us in his faithfulness to us as his children. And though the story continues, and in all the ways in which this ending, this vision might seem beyond the imagination of our hearts or impossible to work toward with our own human hands, the Gospel of John offers us a simple look into the possibility of all things made new. What is found in the words of Jesus is where I think we have our hint. He says, You cannot go where I am headed, but if you love one another, you will see mercy, justice, and peace. And these are the hallmarks of the kingdom of God. If you love one another as I have loved you, that is, If you feed the hungry from your own stores, if you clothe the naked from your own closets, if you heal the sick with your own hands, if you comfort the sorrowful with your own broken heart, if you welcome the lonely with your own embrace, if you forgive the sinner from the depth of your own repentant soul, if you love one another as I have loved you freely, abundantly and without the need for satisfaction, you will know where I am, for I am the God who feeds, who clothes, who heals. I am the God who comforts. I am the God who welcomes and forgives. I am the God who makes all things new from among you, from within your midst. This is the glimpse of glory that Jesus shows to his disciples, to those who love him and to those who follow him. And by God's mercy and grace, this glimpse, perhaps even a larger view of it, is also given to us as well. It is poured into our hearts through the water of baptism. It is sealed upon our heads in the anointing of chrism. It is given in forgiveness when we repent and turn again to God. It is received in the hands when we reach out for our God in gifts of bread and wine, and it streams brightest before our eyes even when at last they close in sleep. We are reminded in Acts also that this vision, this hope and calling to belong to deeper compassion, to deeper community, is not dependent on who we are, but comes to us across difference of identity, creed, and community. All we must do is open our eyes to see it in one another. And when we look to see this vision of God in one another, to see each other through the lens of love which Jesus holds up before each of us, my hope and prayer is that we should not want for anything else because what we can see will change us forever in the light of God. In these times, more than ever, we know what human hearts and hands are capable of. We have seen the kind of change they can bring about, the marks they leave on creation, on humanity, our siblings, in Christ. 
if we would love even half as strongly as we would hate, or even half as much as we might persist in simply hoping for change, what kind of true and life-giving transformation might we witness in this place? My hope is that together we might know how our story ends because we know where it has come from and we know what it means for us in this place. My hope is that we will see the place of God together where He will wipe away every tear from our eyes, where death will be no more, where there will be no more mourning and crying and pain, and where all the former things have passed, and where we will be together home at last in the kingdom of God. Beloved, may it be so in this place and wherever you are, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.